In this video, we're going to take a look at adding and subtracting like radicals and roots. So, the first thing that we should do is just relax a little bit because people tend to get really up in arms when they see all these crazy cube roots and square roots and rational exponents and all this stuff. It's not so bad. We just have to remember one thing. This radical part right here or that rational exponent with the base, if those are the same, we can treat it exactly as we would treat something like this. 3x plus 2x. And that we are very familiar with and we know that's 5x. Okay, So where the x is just going to be that radical part or the root part. <clears throat> so the key like radicals. If we don't have, just like if this was 3x plus 2y, we would not be able to simplify that. The same thing is true when we're adding and subtracting radicals like this. If this was the square root of 7 and then the cube root of 7, can't combine those things because those are different. It has to be the same exact roots. Okay, so let's take a look here. 4 times the cube root of 7 plus 9 times the cube root of 7. These two things are the same, so I'm just going to go ahead and write that part down. So we have the cube root of 7, and, well, there there's 4 of them, because it's 4 times that. Here there's 9 of them, so 4 plus 9 is 13. So 13 times the cube root of 7. My handwriting gets after me a little bit here sometimes. One thing I just want to point out is be very careful when you're writing a cube root like this. Notice how my 3 is a lot smaller than this 3. It's really easy for that to sneak down and look like multiplication. So be very, very careful with that. Okay, how about this one right here? take a look first notice that they both have the square root of 11 so I'm gonna have a square root of 11 in my answer when I simplify those things and then 8 minus 13 well 8 minus 13 would be negative 5 so negative 5 times the square root of 11 we can handle this alright next one here's where I see people get tripped up sometimes remember if we just have that root like this, so the cube root of 4, and then 2 times the cube root of 4, 2 cube root of 4, remember there's always a 1 here, okay? Just like if it was x plus 2x, it would be 3x, right? So in this case, it's going to be, we've got that cube root of 4 piece, first of all, and then we have the 1 plus 2, which is going to be Three. So 3 cube root of 4. Okay, then let's take a look at this. So this is really a radical, right? Because that 1 sixth power is really the sixth root of 9. And so it's going to work the same exact way. Because these two things are the same, the 9 to the 1 sixth power, we're going to have that piece to start with. So it's going to be 9 to the 1 6th right here and then we just have to do 5 minus 2 which is 3 alright let's raise the bar just a little bit we got this so on this one we've got lots more going on on the inside but perhaps you've noticed already that it's the fifth root of 3x minus 1 and the fifth root of 3x minus 1 They're the same. So I'm going to have a fifth root of 3x minus 1. And then I just look at the minus 8 minus 11. So negative 8 minus 11 gives me negative 19. OK, now look at the next one. You say, whoa, 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 wait a minute. OK, can't do it because these are not the same. Well, hmm, let me give you a little hint. If you're asked to add or subtract radicals like this and they're different, 
the chances are really good that there's some simplification that can be done. Um, you might occasionally see it where they can't actually be combined, but in this case, I'm feeling like, hmm, I wonder if this will simplify and maybe then we'll have like radicals. So, remember to simplify these, I'm going to look for something that's to the fourth power and uh, it has a perfect fourth root and it's a factor of 48. So I could break that up and I'm just going to keep the 3 here. So it's going to be 3 times the fourth root of something that's going to work out nice. Well, let's see once. This can give me a hint, okay? Because in order for these to be combined, it's going to have to have the fourth root of 3. So, hmm, 48 times what, or what times what, including a 3, gets me 48. Well, 16. 16 times the fourth root of 3. Wait a minute. The fourth root of 16 is just 2. Ah, perfect. Okay. So, I keep this part. That stays the same. Nothing's changing there. But over here, I can do some simplification. Four times, or the fourth root of 16 is just 2. So we have 3 times 2 times the fourth root of 3. The fourth root of 3. Got to be really careful here. I'm not being as neat as I would like to, but we'll get this. And then over here, it's still 7 times the fourth root of 3. Then we have 3 times 2. Remember, this is all multiplication. So 3 times 2 would make that 6. So we'd have 6 times the fourth root of 3 plus 7 times the fourth root of three. So, hey, look at that. Now we have those like radicals, the fourth root of three on both of them. So that's gonna be a part of my answer here. So we have the fourth root of three and six plus seven of those gets me 13. All right, let's take a look at this last one. You're already in on the trick. Remember, if they're not the same, can I make it so that this one maybe simplifies to be the cube root of 6? Well, 6 times what gets me 48? 8. Okay, so let's just see about this. So we have the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 6. Remember, we can break those up like that because 8 times 6 is 48. Now, why would we do that? Well, maybe it'll allow us to do some simplification. Oh, look at this. Okay, so the cube root of eight is just two, so we have two times the cube root of six plus, oh, look at that, three times the cube root of six. Boom, we got like radicals right there. So then we just have our cube root of six We've got that piece, and then two of those plus three of those gives me five times the cube root of six. Adding and subtracting like radicals and roots, remember that we have to have that same radical, the like radical, it works just like this. So if we have the same radical, we can simply add what you might even call the coefficient of that radical portion. Then add or subtract those pieces. Be on the lookout for things where there's not a number in front here. Remember there's always a one, so we can add those together. It works the same way with rational exponents. Have to have the same base and the same exponent. This could also be written as the sixth root of nine. If we have variable stuff going on, again it has to be the same. And then the tricky ones where, oh, they're not the same, but wait, can we make them the same? Look for those factors that are going to break that up and also use the smaller one as a hint. Maybe there can be some simplification to make it into that. I hope this video was helpful. Adding and subtracting like radicals and roots. Take a deep breath. 
you got this not near as scary as it might look have a great time doing your math